Hello. Hello, welcome. Welcome to our show, Lifestyle Magazine. I'm grinning, but I'll tell you right now, it's not easy. I was just uh, rejected for a part that I wanted really badly. Tammy. I'm sorry, Clifton. Yeah, I am too. Uh, well, how does that make you feel? What do you do when you lose a part? Do you mope for a week? Well, no, I mope a little bit. I got to mope, but I don't mope very long <laughs> uh, uh, because it, it hurts your self-esteem. And I've learned over the years that if you... But if Clifton, you, if you, you have a healthy self-esteem. I know, but if I've learned over the years that if you let one of these things defeat you, you may not get back up against so You've got to get up. You are not defined by what somebody else thinks <laughs> But I saw Clifton you. the other night. We were at dinner. I saw Clifton get uh, offered five bucks if he would stand up in this restaurant, and this is not a restaurant where people do this, if he would stand up and sing a song. And I thought, no way. But your daughter was pretty worried that you oh, would very, pull it off. She was scared she I was would actually She was scared out of her it. mind, and you did. <laughs> he well, stood up. Well, it he just stood right up there. Sang a song. Sang a song. But you know, that's, that's because I do that. You know, I could, I could stand here right now. God yes, I know you and could. God alone. <laughs> You're not getting five more bucks. No more money for Clifton. But I still yes. have problems with self-esteem. And that's really what our show is it's about, about today. today. Yes. And we are extremely honored today to have with us a man who will undoubtedly rank as one of the great psychologists mm -hmm. of the 20th century. He single-handedly has made self-esteem a household word, bringing it to the forefront of psychology through his 20 books and almost four decades of lecturing on the topic. Join me in welcoming Dr. Nathaniel Brandon. Yes. Hello, welcome. Thank you. So Happy good to, to have you. Thank you, Dr. Brandon. Happy to be here. We are, I don't know about Tammy, but personally I'm very excited about yes. chatting with you today. Yes because uh, of the struggle I had with self-esteem being in the entertainment business and, mm -hmm. uh, and what I see my children going through. What exactly is self-esteem? Self-esteem is the experience of being competent to cope with the basic challenges of life and of being worthy of happiness. Mm. So it has enormous survival value. You talk about your children. Well, you want to raise children who feel comfortable and confident facing the challenges of life, mm -hmm. being able to take care of themselves in the world, being able to relate effectively to other people, mm -hmm. having enough resilience to overcome setbacks. But it's not a free gift of nature. It's got to be developed. It's got to be learned. It's got to be cultivated. I listened to your tape <clears throat> in doing research for this interview, and, and uh, I tell you what, aside from learning a lot about whether or not my self-esteem is from within or outside motivated, which I have sense enough to know it doesn't come from without. <laughs> but what I really realized that would, was very interesting to me was two very important points. One, that it has to deal with the child within us, those of us who are adults, and I'd love you to address that. And the second thing was, I feel very guilty about putting some of those negative messages in my own children's heads. Mm -hmm. every, one of, every one of us was obviously once a child. And that child still exists as part of our psyche. It's what we call in our work a subpersonality. And I can be more or less conscious of the little Nathaniel inside me. I can be more or less benevolent, more or less accepting, more or less rejecting. Now, a lot of people, consciously or unconsciously, either don't want to know about or actively hate the child they once were. It's like an embarrassment. I was so needy. I was so weepy. I didn't stand up to the neighborhood bully. And they imagine that they can, on the foundation of that kind of self-rejection, build an adult healthy self-esteem. They can't. Mm. So learning how to accept my younger selves is a very, very important part of building self-esteem. So self -esteem. then to what I hear you saying is that self-esteem is foundation in childhood. That's, is that where it all happens? Are you born with some of it? Or is it your environment? So. Or Obviously, your childhood and your, the kind of parenting you get and your interactions with your peers all play a role in shaping the kind of self-esteem that's going to evolve slowly over the years. Right. And um, what I want to, however, emphasize in the brief time we have is what possibilities we have as adults to affect the quality of our self-esteem because it's a little mm -hmm. late in the game for most of us mm -hmm. to old enough to, to watch the show to get ourselves re-brought up by some other parents. You know, the folks that come into my office, most of the time, they're not succeeding 
simply because they don't try. Well, that's sort of what I wanted to ask, and that right. is, what role does self-esteem play in a corporate community? Right, when you Gigantic. grow Gigantic. Uh, more and more of my work has to do with applying and teaching self-esteem principles and technology to the problems of business and the information age, because today, it's not muscle work, it's brain work, it's that's knowledge right. work, which means trust in your own mind, which goes to the heart of self-esteem, acquires a new economic importance. So if I approached when the countless challenges of a super competitive global economy, I need confidence in my own resources. Right. I need confidence in my own mind and my own ability to think and learn and master new challenges. Mm -hmm. If I want to relate effectively to other people, you've heard about emotional intelligence, that intimately relates to self-esteem mm -hmm. because the more comfortable I am within myself, the more likely I am to treat other people with respect, kindly, generously, decently. The more insecure I am within myself, the more frightened I am. And out of my fear, I can behave very inappropriately. Mm. Wow. So mm. self-esteem has a whole lot to how you can risk failure, correct? And that would be the corporate world. If you have a good self-esteem, you, you can risk failing. That's correct. Which uh, you have to do all the time. You you're absolutely on, right. You Thank you. You're, she's quite right. Because you see, um, if I am afraid that if I try and if I fail, that means I'm a worthless human being. That's right. It doesn't yeah. mean any such thing. You know, it's a famous statement somebody made of a very successful company. Something is wrong around here. We're not making enough mistakes. Yes. On Think that about thought, that. Yes. On that thought, we're going to come back in just a minute. And when we come back, Dr. Nathaniel Brandon is going to show us the six pillars of self-esteem. We're going to build a house of self-esteem on those six pillars. Now, I want you to get a pencil. I'm serious. <laughs> Go get a pencil during this commercial because you need to write this stuff down. We'll be right back. This is Hello Channel. Well, I hope you all got those pencils because we're ready for the six pillars of self-esteem. Somebody please write it down for Clifton. <laughs> Dr. Brandon, what are the six pillars of self-esteem? Well, first of all, they're the name of my most important book. Oh, all right. <laughs> for, I've been working in the field now for f roughly 40 years. Wow. And I identified six principles which I became persuaded are more important for growing healthy self-esteem than any others. They are, first of all, the practice of living consciously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the practice of self-acceptance, the practice of self-responsibility, the practice of self-assertiveness, <laughs> the practice of living purposefully, the practice of personal integrity. Which one? Well, one jumps out at me, Tim. Which one? And that's the self-acceptance because, you know, if you stumble, if you fall, accepting your own failure and getting back up and trying again is that related in that it's way? supremely important if you're interested in having a happy successful life think about just one simple fact right. an incredibly high number of our most successful entrepreneurs have two or more bankruptcies in their past mm -hmm. failure didn't stop them everybody fails sometimes so self-acceptance is very very important in terms of accepting my thoughts accepting my feelings accepting my actions as mine not necessarily liking or admiring but being truthful with myself by willing to look, yeah, I did think that, yeah, I did feel that, yeah, I did do that, and I don't disown myself, I don't repudiate myself. If, it, I, if I made a mistake, I'll try to do better next time. But it isn't is. that uh, self-responsibility? That's the third pillar of self-esteem, and that is, what does it mean very, very fast? I am the author of my choices and actions. I am responsible for my life and well-being. I don't come into this world entitled as an adult to anything from wow. anybody. I tell you, I've been doing psychotherapy for a long time. There's no single issue that more turns lives around when they finally get it through their head that if they don't do something different, nothing is going to get better. It sounds to me like a, a good dose of common sense that grandma would have told you. I mean, my mother, she used to say, don't cry over spilled milk, you know? And little things like that help you to know you've got to accept your, 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 your mistakes and move on. It's very important, and I'll tell you one reason why. It's very easy to make guilt into a cop-out. Oh, I'm such a failure, I'm a misfit, I can't do anything right, secret message, expect nothing of me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I often ask people, tell me, what is the great reward for being so guilty? Well, it spares me the necessity to pick myself up and going back to face the challenges yeah. and trying to do better next time. Yes. Uh, 
Self-assertiveness is a very important pillar of self-esteem and also not so well understood. That has to do with my willingness to treat myself and my feelings and my thoughts with decent respect in encounters with other human beings. It's my willingness to let you see me. It's my mm -hmm. willingness to be authentic. It's my willingness to live my values in the world rather than what? Hide, conceal, bury who I am in case, God forbid, you should frown at me or dislike something I've said. Mm -hmm. Living purposefully is yeah. the fifth pillar. That has to do with not drifting. It has to do with formulating what are my short-term and my long-term goals. Yes. Thinking through what kind of actions I need to wow. get where I want to go rather than just wishing or hoping. And a very my holy of holies, paying attention to outcome because I may have good goals and a good action plan, but there are mistakes I've made, miscalculations. And my actions are not producing the results I wanted. Do, do I stay attached to my theory, no. or do I say, hey, I gotta go back to the drawing board and try something different? Oh, this is, this is my, if I had one string, this would be it, because people don't ever sit down and go, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. What am I trying to accomplish? And then is what I'm doing going to get me there? And if it's not, change it. Well, that is the way that anybody who is seriously successful lives. You formulate your goals, and then you pay attention it sounds so obvious, and yet people don't do it. No. Uh, it. Pay attention. Are my strategies and actions and tactics producing the results which I expected? Hmm. Have we missed any of the six? Because I don't well, think you did them well, in order. We're going to get to the other one. But I think we've got some more fruit, some more meat on the bones. I know that um, another guest would not have appreciated <laughs> that analogy. But uh, I think that... <laughs> In okay. this, this idea of assertiveness, not everybody can do this. There are a lot of people who are very shy and retiring. Does that mean that they're not going to have high no. self-esteem? Let me explain. I agree with you that not everybody, some people come into this world somewhat shy. But I work with shy people. I teach self-assertiveness, among other things. And most of us who have some aspect of this problem can do better than we're doing now. We don't all have to reach the same height. but. Self-expression is wonderful. Being willing to be authentic is wonderful. It's good for the health, it's good for the soul, mm -hmm. it's good for the relationships. And if I can learn to do it 10% better than I was doing it last year, that's great. Mm. Can I say a word just about the last of the six pillars? Yes. Yeah. I know yeah. we're going to talk about consciousness. We're, we're going to go there. Actually, we're going to break away in just a minute, and we're going to get into that sixth pillar. Before we did that, I wanted to say all of these first five are all tied together. And They're all gonna... integrated, and they all interrelate. But, but as we see them, as we look at them, just as lay people, it's easy to see the self-assertiveness, self-responsibility, uh, what is it, self... Uh, Self-acceptance. Acceptance. Yeah. All of these things are tied to one another, integrated, as you say. Yes. And if you fall down in one area and find strength in another, maybe you can help pull up You're one of the other right. areas. You're absolutely right. Quite right. Mm. Well said, sir. People, have you written these things down? I mean, it's mm -hmm. so important that you write this stuff down because before we're finished here, we've got an exercise, all right? We have to go to a break, but there are thousands of people out there with their pencils ready to work on raising their self-esteem. So... Why don't you give them an exercise, Doc, to do over the next commercial break? Can mm -hmm. you do that? Write this down, please. If I bring 5% more awareness to my most Im important relationships, if I bring 5% more awareness to my most important relationships, now here comes the challenge. As fast as you can write, don't think, don't rehearse, don't center. Write six to 10 endings for that stem as fast as you can move your pen or your pencil over the paper. All right. Okay. And uh, I'm going to try to write it. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> we learned English. Your kids can too. Just watch Hello Channel. All right. Well, we broke away, all right, we had you writing, you know, if I gave 5% more awareness to my most important relationships, mm -hmm. and then you were going to write some answers there, okay? Yeah. Now, I'm sorry. I said if I give 5% more to my most personal, uh, most important relationships, you would. Uh, I would enrich my life, I would uh, make better friends, I would have more sensitivity. Um, okay, tell me, Those tell are me, different tell times. Me, if I could bring 5% more awareness to my most important relationships. I would work less, I would spend more time with them, I would um, not feel as guilty. Okay, mm -hmm. so what is the point? Thank so, you, beautiful. That's great. <laughs> 
No, no, no. Come on. <laughs> you know, we we're academ academicians here. Yeah. We, right, right. We right. want a grade. No, it's excellent. That's my only grade. Excellent. What a great guest. We'll have you back. <laughs> Sense, thank you. Sense completion is a marvelous de tool that I've been developing since 1969 for tapping people into things they know but don't know they know tapping them into their unconscious wisdom, helping them to articulate and put out mm -hmm. something which is too deep to be doing them any good. Mm -hmm. For example, a very common response to, if I bring 5% more awareness, my most important relationships is, I spend more time listening to my spouse, or I would listen more to my children. Mm -hmm. So now there it is in black and white, now I've got a choice. To do it or not. So the, the sentence completion technique can be used for solving all kinds of psychological problems. Mm -hmm. I have a question though, sure. because Here's the deal, like if you gave me any sentence to complete about any aspect of my life, if right. you said, you know, if you could bring 5% more awareness to your work, I could come up with goals that are unmet, which is what I'm sharing with you when I, when I complete. But I can't do all the goals to every one of the aspects Listen, of my of life. of course you can, Tammy. The answer is this. You never base work just upon one set of stems. This is a demonstration. This okay. is not a real working session. Okay. Mm -hmm. you would, do multiple stems. You'd approach ah. a problem from multiple angles. Because at some point, I might give you a stem. If I took more responsibility for prioritizing my time, okay, and that would lead you to ah. realize now to you have one. to make choices. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense to yes. you. Yes. So don't take this out of context. Then I've got to ask you another question. We looked at uh, we had personal integrity. We're going to talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit. We. We did write that down as one of our pillars. We're gonna talk about it, but I really wanna get into this living consciously. It's kind of an abstract concept, to me, what, Okay, very, very fast. Living consciously means respect for reality, respect for facts, being willing to look at what is there, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, whether that could be my internal life or my external life. A lot of people don't look at problems, for example, in their marriage until the divorce. That's a simple example of not having the courage uh, to look at what I need to look at. Mm -hmm. It means having my focus where it needs to be in order to get the job done. But I'll tell you a favorite story of mine. I was giving a lecture in Washington, D.C. around five years ago. And in the lecture, I spent maybe five or ten minutes talking about living consciously. Afterwards, a group of men took me out for coffee. And one man said, you know, the part of your talk that hit me the most was talking about living consciously. I want to tell you a story. One miserably hot Saturday afternoon, I was working on my car trying to fix a problem I couldn't fix. And my five-year-old son came over. He's telling me all this. And without thinking whether it was realistic to ask a five-year-old to do this, I asked him to perform some task for me relative to the car. And of course, he couldn't do it, and he didn't do it. And I went berserk. I lost my temper. I became wow. exasperated, and I hollered at him, mm -hmm. you can't do anything right. Mm. Mm. He says, and then, in the next moment to my horror, I saw my five-year-old boy walking away, muttering to himself under his breath, you can't do anything right. You oh. can't do anything right. He says, I dropped my tools, and I ran over, and I picked up my son, and I hugged him, and I apologized, and I felt terrible. But now here's what's bothering me, Nathaniel. Thank God in that moment, mm -hmm. I caught myself, and I had a chance to correct it. What frightens me is how many times, I don't know what was coming out of my mouth till a week later, if ever, right. and what damage I can be doing. And so what I really got from you is one of the most important meanings of the practice of living consciously to me is being conscious and taking responsibility for the words coming out of my mouth. Living consciously, is that just being in touch with reality? Yes. Period, is that like well, a I mean, lay? Well, you want to push it to the ultimate, except that's very abstract. But it does mean paying attention to, to the To what you've got around yes. you. Or what you're doing. Or, very important, seeking out knowledge, information, feedback that will help you achieve your goals. That's also part of being mentally active and living consciously rather than just having high hopes. And how do I, is there an exercise I can do for myself to, to live more, I keep wanting to go self-consciously. If I brought, if I, I could, if you care to read my book, uh, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, or the newer book, You the have Art, a new book the coming. Newer, the new book, The Art of Living Consciously, there's dozens and dozens of exercises, of exercises. to teach people how to live more consciously. The Simple Art of, of Living, living co consciously. consciously. I want to make sure we got that. Right. Plug in. Example, sense completion. If I just let me run very fast. If I bring five percent more consciousness to my deepest feelings, mm -hmm. if I bring five percent more consciousness to my insecurities, if I bring five percent more consciousness to my work, if I bring five percent more consciousness to the way I interact with people, I can keep going for another half hour. Why five percent? I'm often asked, because I believe in bite-sized shoes.
All right. Because I don't want something intimidating. Because everybody feels, gosh, I can do 5%. But you know something? If you understand uh, compound interest, with 5%, you can move the world. Now, I'm assuming in your book, right. after I complete all those sentences, you tell me what to do with my answers. Well, well now, now you know <laughs> psychology doesn't always tell you what to do. It tries to I'm help not you here. to help yourself. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what to do. He's quite right. But what I do do is include sentence stems that will encourage you to figure out what to do about the, about the previous sentence stems. That's this, built this into the structure. This sounds like a lot of work. This Listen, is a lot we've of work. We've got to wrap this it's up. A, a lot wanna, of work? Yes. We've got to wrap it up, he but I want to ask sentence. you about personal integrity. Well, I don't want our audience to lose <laughs> that. If I bring 5% more integrity to my daily life, I will tell the truth. I will honor my commitments. I will pursue the values I say I admire and avoid the things I say I deplore. I will take responsibility for my actions. Mm -hmm. I will not hang out with people I really know in my heart I don't like. Hmm. Well, I Am I being clear? Yes. Got Absolutely. The message? Yes. Crystal clear. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Brandon has given us some ways that we can improve our self-esteem. We'll be back with more after this. Looking for a brighter future? Learn English and make it happen on Hello Channel. This show has been particularly informative to me and so useful. I mean, it's going to just help my relationship with my children and help my self-esteem as well. Yes. Not that it needed that much help, huh? <laughs> no. uh, how about you, Tammy? No, I think it's very motivational. Makes you stop and say, maybe I should take a look at this. And Thank you very much. It Thank was a you. It's a pleasure to work with both great of you. Great to Dr. meet you. Dr. Nathaniel Brandon, we're going to look for your books, and if you want the titles of those and other health-related issues, just log on to our website, www.lifestyle.org. And uh, I'm Clifton Davis. I'm Tammy McGrew. And thanks for watching Lifestyle Magazine. Thanks. See you next time. Bye. Bye.